It will be a showdown in Mobile tonight as Mayor Sandy Stimson and former Mayor Sam Jones square off in the first televised mayoral debate right here on Local 15. Local 15's Greg Peterson and Kim Thurman are moderating tonight's debate at St. Dominic's. They join us now live and guys, we'd ask viewers uh, for some questions for tonight's debate and they've come up with some tough ones. New tonight at five, a mobile man has been arrested and charged with murder after investigators say he shot and killed his sister's boyfriend. The shooting happened this past Friday on Carlton Avenue, just one of five shootings we reported last week. Local 15's Jasmine Williams joins us now live. Jasmine, the accused gunman is claiming self defense. Well, the state of emergency has been declared in 31 counties in the central and southern part of Florida as Tropical Storm Emily formed overnight. And the system is now heading straight towards the Tampa Bay area, bringing torrential rain, wind and flooding. And meteorologist Jake Dunn has been tracking this system. He joins us now in the Weather Center with more, Jake. In less than an hour, we are expected to learn if the Carnival Cruise Line will stay here in Mobile. Mobile Mayor Sandy Stimson is returning from Miami and is expected to make the announcement once he lands tonight. Local 15's Muriel Bailey joins us live from the Mobile Regional Airport with the latest. Muriel. Muriel, thank you. Today in Fairhope, Congressman Bradley Byrne held a town hall meeting for President Trump's agenda and the latest changes at the White House became the heated topic of discussion. Local 15's James Gordon joins us from Fairhope City Hall where that meeting is just wrapping up. James, a lot was on the congressman's plate today. James, thanks. Continuing coverage tonight, Gulf Shores' effort to break from the Baldwin County public school system continues. This evening, the city approving money for a feasibility study. Local 15's Corey Pippen joins us now. And Corey, they are apparently not going to waste much time getting that study underway. Hey, this tonight, a mobile man is behind bars after police say he called in a bomb threat. Police have arrested Anthony Joyner in connection to the bomb threats at the Alabama Media Group and the Mobile Press Register. The call came in about 1 o'clock this afternoon. Officials had to clear Water Street and used bomb sniffing dogs while they investigated the threat. No word if anything was found. And the follow up tonight as the search continues for an inmate still on the loose after breaking out of jail yesterday. Officials say peanut butter may have played a role in the escape of 12 inmates, the Walker County Jail. Officials tell us a new prison guard opened a door to the outside thinking it was a cell door. The number had been covered with peanut butter. All but one of the prisoners is back in custody tonight. Brady Kilpatrick remains at large. We are helping you get acquainted with the candidates running in the August 15th U.S. Senate election here in Alabama. Yeah, tonight we're going to hear from former U.S. Attorney Doug Jones. Here's some background. He is currently 63 years old and is running as a Democrat for the Senate seat. Jones is best known for prosecuting Ku Klux Klan members who bombed the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham in 1963. He is married with three children and two grandchildren. And tonight we find out his goals if given the opportunity to serve as you. It just flew off. The whole thing flew off. Her leg hit. Well, her leg hit. Her leg just like flew off her whole leg. <laughs> and then the two hit the ground. <laughs> Terrifying moments as a fair ride in Ohio breaks apart midair, killing one and injuring several others. New this noon, officials identify the person killed on that ride as Tyler Gerald. Meanwhile, Ohio's Governor John Kasich orders all rides at the fair shut down until safety inspections are complete. Blake McCoy has details. New this noon, Mobile Sheriff's deputies locate the son of the missing Wilmer woman they believe may have something to do with her disappearance. Local 15's Megan Gannon is in the newsroom right now. And Megan, you spoke with the Sheriff's Office this morning, and what did they tell you about the son? Breaking news right now, a local contractor exposed by Local 15 News pleaded guilty to scamming customers. Roddy Fitzgerald pled guilty to theft and ID theft this morning in court. He owns Commodore Steel. Authorities say he put fraudulent engineer signatures and stamps of approval on dozens of building plans when, in fact, no engineer had approved those plans. Fitzgerald is sentenced to five years behind bars. New at noon, charges dropped against an elderly Baldwin County woman in the murder and dismemberment of her husband. Prosecutors say they don't have enough evidence against Carolyn Hood. Carolyn and her stepson, William Mitten, are both charged in Kenneth Hood's brutal murder. Authorities say he was bludgeoned to death inside his Foley home. They say his body was hacked to pieces and scattered in creeks near Magnolia Springs. Mitten is set to go on trial in October. 
A Mobile woman shot and killed on a road trip. She will be remembered tonight. Police in Jemison, Alabama say 22 year old Marche Westbrook was gunned down by her girlfriend, Khadijah Montgomery of Pritchard. Montgomery's in jail in Chilton County, charged with murder. A vigil will be held this evening at 8 o'clock at Municipal Park in Mobile, and it will be open to the public. The Mobile man charged with killing a Sims team is scheduled to be extradited back to Mississippi today. Matthew Moberg is charged in the death of Brian Parker. Parker's body found in Greene County, Mississippi back in May. Moberg is currently jailed in Mobile, charged with attempting to elude police. Wednesday, the Mobile County DA's office decided not to prosecute him on that charge, and instead they will extradite Moberg to Mississippi, where he'll face a capital murder charge in the case. President Trump receiving backlash after posting tweets banning transgender individuals from serving in the military. Local 15 Zora Asbury tells us what local politicians are saying about this issue and Zora Bradley Byrne is now speaking out. A local man faces a murder charge today after deputies say a love triangle turned deadly in Theodore. They say this man on your screen, Wesley Bohannon, shot and killed Joshua Poole last night at Poole's home on Hunters Point Drive. Investigators believe the two men were involved with the same woman. An inmate on the loose in Baldwin County is recaptured. The Department of Corrections says Carl Mitchell left his assigned job in Bay Minette Wednesday morning. Now, authorities say he returned to his work site yesterday afternoon around 530 and was arrested without incident. Mitchell, by the way, is serving a 20 year sentence on distribution of a controlled substance. He's now facing charges for escape. Well, after efforts to repeal Obamacare failed twice this week, the U.S. Senate debates new ideas today. One could save you money, but leave millions without coverage. They're calling it a skinny repeal, and it could get a vote today. It gets rid of some taxes and penalties for not buying insurance, but doesn't touch low-income subsidies or Medicaid. The Congressional Budget Office says 16 million could lose coverage. Premiums would go up 20 percent. Lawmakers are ready to do something under pressure from the president and the White House. We better get that done, fellas, please. Step up to commitments that they made during the campaign. But Democrats refuse to jump in until Republicans offer more cooperation and compromise. A high ozone alert remains in place for Mobile and Baldwin counties, meaning pollution levels that are harmful to children, older adults, and anybody with a respiratory or heart condition. Happening right now, a wave of potentially heavy rainfall is heading to our area. Yeah, to start things off, let's take it right over to Chief Meteorologist Jake Dunn. Jake, this rain is settling in for a while. To show uh, the public, um, you know, what actually happens. Well, the city of Mobile is going to be getting some national attention tomorrow on the A&E Crime Show First 48. Ahead of the big premiere, we are talking to one of the stars and homicide detective, Kenneth Gillespie. <laughs> Local 15's Jasmine Williams is live now at Mobile Police Headquarters. Jasmine A&E has been following this department for about a year now. Well, new tonight, a big change is coming to the Greater Gulf State Fairgrounds. The grounds has purchased 65 acres of land adjacent to the facility. The expansion will offer a variety of future possibilities. Right now, though, it's going to provide an additional entrance to the grounds. Um, you know, we're solely focused on our community. So this just opens a, a wide range of plans. Um, anyway, we're, we're looking for partnerships. So if uh, anybody in the community, any other nonprofits want to team up, you know, we're willing to do that. But immediately it's going to offer an entrance to the fair this year off of Howes Ferry. As what's in store for the additional land that was purchased, officials tell us a future entertainment venue is a possibility. The fair is coming up from October 27th to November 5th. We have a crime alert to tell you about tonight. Mobile police have arrested a man they say impersonated an officer. They say Antavius Berry tried to enter a person's home, forced the victim to his vehicle, took items from his car, and took off. Happened this morning just after midnight on St. Anthony Street. Berry was later arrested. He remains in jail tonight. Alabama's attorney general is seeking to conduct more executions this year. Steve Marshall stopped in Mobile to speak with law enforcement officers. Marshall said he was put in additional requests to have more executions. The Supreme Court has not yet ruled on the state's motions to set execution dates for three death row inmates. Alabama has executed two death row inmates so far this year. Major retail mall, the Eastern Shore Center in Spanish Fort, may soon be getting a facelift. City officials and the city's legal team have met with new owners and say they are encouraged by plans to bring in more tenants. 
Local 15's James Gordon has an update on the long-awaited plans. As President Trump has thrown his support behind a proposed bill that seeks to curb the level of legal immigration into the U.S. The bill proposes a skills-based immigration system that would dramatically rebuild the current system. Trump says the merit-based plan would protect American workers by cutting back on unskilled laborers coming into the U.S. In our Connect to Congress series, I spoke with Senator Richard Shelby about this. He shared his view on the proposal. I like the, the concept of this. I believe we ought to bring, bring people in this country that can help build this country, help bring, create jobs and wealth for our people. And these are what you're, they're talking about. To see my entire interview with Senator Shelby and other interviews in the Connect to Congress segment, head over to our website, local15tv.com. A local consignment shop is now in the center of a federal case after selling a fur coat made with Jaguar fur. Prosecutors say in a criminal complaint, the shop, which does business as Hertha's second edition, violated the federal act by selling the fur coat to a customer in Biloxi, Mississippi. Authorities say it was made partly from the hide of a Jaguar. Doing so violates the Endangered Species Act. If convicted, the charge is punishable by up to a year in prison. All right, an update now to a story we first uh, told you about last week. Lad People Stadium is clarifying now its water policy tonight. You will be allowed to bring empty water bottles into the stadium. The stadium will then provide water to fill those plastic bottles. So we got that all square. All right, well, new developments in the fight against prescription drug abuse that is plaguing the nation right now. The new efforts Attorney General Jeff Sessions is making to track down doctors who illegally prescribe painkillers. A terrifying sight, an airport worker struck by lightning and still alive to talk about it. The moments he was hit by one billion volts and the extent of his injury. Could it be the kiss of death? What a new study reveals about the transmission of the Zika virus in our area. Montgomery doctor is behind bars tonight following a pill mill bust. Federal agents rolled into this office to serve a search and arrest warrant for Dr. Gilberto Sanchez. Tonight he is indicted on drug distribution charges for reportedly running a pill mill out of his office on Atlanta Highway in Montgomery. If convicted, Sanchez could serve up to 20 years per count. Now you may remember a similar case here in Mobile. Two pain doctors were convicted for running a pill mill. Earlier this year, Dr. Shulu Ron and John Couch were sentenced to more than 20 years in prison each. Both doctors will also have to pay back millions in restitution to large insurance companies like Blue Cross and TRICARE. Developing right now for the second day in a row, President Trump has released negative tweets aimed at his own attorney general and former Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions. And now many political pundits and associates of Sessions believe the president is trying to give the AG a not so subtle message to resign. Local 15 Zora Asbury joins us with a breakdown of what the president is tweeting about Sessions and reaction from some of those who know him. Zora. Hey, thank you, Zora. Meanwhile, that investigation into allegations of Trump campaign ties to Russia forages on. Moments ago, a spokesperson for Paul Manafort, a former campaign chairman for President Trump, announced that Manafort has met this morning with Senate investigators. His appearance followed one yesterday and again today by President Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner. Kushner told media yesterday he did not collude with Russians and doesn't know anyone who did. Also developing this noon, it's make or break for Senate Republicans on health care. The Senate is scheduled to vote today on whether to begin debate on repealing and replacing Obamacare. I hope everyone will seize the moment. I certainly will. Only then can we open up a robust debate process. Only then will senators have the opportunity to offer additional ideas on health care. Joining the vote will be Senator John McCain, and this will be the first time back since his brain cancer diagnosis and surgery. Republicans have a slim 52 seat majority in the Senate. They need at least 50 of them to vote yes for the motion to move forward. And there's late word that Kentucky Senator Rand Paul will also vote to begin debate on repealing Obamacare. An update right now to the Washington County, Alabama Sheriff's deputy critically injured in a crash last week. Sheriff Richard Stringer says Chief Deputy Deshaun Holloway is improving every day, but has a long road ahead of him. 
Holloway was critically injured in a wreck last Tuesday. His patrol vehicle fli flipped seven to eight times in a single vehicle accident. This was on Highway 45 near the Mississippi state line. He was airlifted to USA Medical Center. He is still there as he continues to recover. Trending right now is Foley's new amusement park. Oa too selective about who rides its rides. The folks on social media are not happy with Oa's descriptions of its ride restrictions in the description entitled guests of larger size. Oa states guests of certain body proportions may not be accommodated, including but not limited to guests exceeding six foot two inches or 225 pounds, as well as those who have a 40 inch waistline, a 52 inch chest or quote, Females who exceed 200 pounds or wear a size 18 or larger. He's six foot eight. I'm at least six one. We have a 13 year old who's about five foot seven, but she's over the, the weight restriction limit. You would think that parks like this would accommodate for larger people. In a statement, Owa says, quote, it was never our intent to offend any person or group and that the restrictions are provided by the ride manufacturer to ensure the safety of guests and employees. Along with the statement, Owa also changed the wording on its website. Investigators are picking through twisted metal. That's what's left after the collapse of South Alabama's football training facility. They're trying to find out what caused that multi-million dollar project to come crashing down. The building was supposed to serve as a location for football players to practice on wet and stormy days. Well, now investigators are working to determine if it might have been a storm that caused that collapse. And the collapse is dampening the spirits of students and faculty at the Sunbelt Conference Monday. Disappointed in the fact that what happened did happen. There will be good intent to, to figure out what's going on and where we're at and how we're going to get there. We're told that M.W. Rogers, a mobile firm, was the general contractor on that project. So far, they've declined to comment on the collapse. When a man tried to abduct a 13-year-old girl in Criollo last week, she did the only thing that she could think to do to get him to let her go. She bit him. The girl, Kaylee is her name, she says she was jogging in Criollo, Alabama last week when a white four-door vehicle pulled up in front of her. She says a white man jumped out of the driver's seat and grabbed her, and that's when she bit him as hard as she could. Kaylee says the man then punched her and started dragging her toward the vehicle, but someone in that vehicle began yelling at the man, and he finally let her go. So today, police are looking for a tall man with dark hair, believed to be in his 30s. And Kaylee says when she bit the man, she noticed a large tattoo on his upper left arm. Criola police believe he's dri driving a white four-door vehicle. It could be a Chevy Impala. And Kaylee says she thought she saw a dent somewhere near the driver's side rear fender. An Atmore mother behind bars this noon. She's accused of sex trafficking, excuse me, sex trafficking a 13-year-old daughter. Hard to say, even harder to believe. According to Atmore News, police arrested Melissa Stoker and charged her with human trafficking. Stoker's own mother, 66-year-old Mary Daw, was arrested last week on the very same charges. Police say Daw allowed her 87-year-old boyfriend, Charles Stacy to have sex with the teen in exchange for money. This morning, all three suspects remain in jail under a $1 million bond. Right now, a $5,000 reward is being offered after several guns were stolen from a gun store. The Monroeville Police Department here is working along with the Bureau of Alcohol, Firearms and Explosives. They say at least 20 guns were stolen from the AAA pawn shop earlier this month. If you have any information about this, call the ATF. The number is an 800 number and 283-4867. Alabama troopers say they still need your help this afternoon tracking down a driver involved in a deadly interstate hit and run. The crash brought westbound I-10 to a halt by the Alabama-Mississippi state line. This was yesterday morning. Authorities say a pedestrian was hit and killed sometime between 1130 Sunday night and 330 Monday morning. Troopers are working to notify the victim's family before releasing the victim's identity. In the meantime, they need your help finding the driver involved. Officials say the vehicle is a Toyota Tundra, but they're not sure what color it is. They say it will have extensive damage to the right front headlight and fender, and according to investigators, it is missing a passenger mirror and a radio antenna. If you think you know where this vehicle might be, you are urged to call Alabama State Troopers at 251-660-2300.